Hello everybody and welcome into the SFA Season 15 Week 11 Bear Cave. We are here for another week. A lot of crazy stuff happened in the sim. First of all, let me know if you can hear me. And give me a second, I gotta turn off my air conditioner. All right, we are here, and uh, and we are uh, right about one month away from the brand new game. So a couple of things is I just completely redid my setup because I had to get another monitor. I had to buy a PS5. So this is the first stream we're doing full-blown, and everything's practically flipped. So it might take me a second or two here to... Uh, to, to go about the stream and the regular stuff. But as always, this is the SFA. It's an online dynasty. Ran through uh, Twitch, uh, Discord, and YouTube. You can jump in at any time. You can claim a team. You can uh, recruit. You can set playbooks. You can hire coordinators. And you can participate in any of our server games as well. And, uh, and, and it's a great time. So feel free to check out links in any of our descriptions. Um, and as always... We are affiliated, so if you are watching live, you might run into some ads, so feel free to use that Twitch Prime sub. It helps us fund the National Championship trophy and care package for you guys. Uh, oh my gosh. You guys are spamming me about Rylan Warrenberg. <laughs> You're going to have to see. I'm not going to leak it, even though uh, it's right on stream here. Um, but a couple of notes here is I'm looking at the calendar. Ah! All right, thank you, Coach Carayo, for ruining my ears. But Papa Piglet gets himself a uh, a sub. Thank you, thank you. Um, but before we get started, a couple of things is I was looking at the schedule and how the Season 15 end is going to overlay with the launch of the new game. And we are behind schedule. So, uh, so for the remainder of the season we instead of doing a five day schedule we're going to a four games or a four day schedule so normally after week 11 uh today the next one would be five days from now on sunday however we're gonna we're gonna speed it up a bit and we'll do it on saturday so uh what that means is is some things are gonna come out a little faster than normal so uh like like game day poll will probably come out tonight um bear cave hopefully will come out tomorrow night that sort of thing and then um and then things getting cut is going to be patreon recruiting updates uh because we're not going to need them and if we end up do needing them if god forbid we have to stay on this game then we i'll do that in the off season but we are going to speed it up the rest of the season so four or three days between each game day instead of four so that also remain means bear cave is uh, required faster that means your bets are required to be submitted faster and you're recruiting so stay on schedule don't get uh don't go crazy it's a technically a four-day schedule so like after today the next game day will be on saturday for week 12 okay that'll give us some extra days so i don't have to go ballistic um so i don't have to go ballistic in the off season doing like the entire cfp in three days right so um yeah, so let's get on into it, and as always, check out Home Field Apparel. They're launching some crazy collections. They're launching the Delta State Fighting Okra uh, here on Friday, so check them out. Use code SFA. But you guys know Bear Cave, we take the 10 best games of the week, and we sim them live, and if the game is close, then, we will, uh, then we'll actually jump in and watch the finale or watch how it ends. And four weeks left in the regular season. A lot of divisions are starting to come up and starting to be decided. CFP positions, group of five, we're, we're going to see more. And we had one of our final undefeated teams. We had three coming into the week. And uh, and Buffalo took an L today. Um, also, West Virginia only scored two points. So uh, that's hilarious. But uh, well, welcome in, Nathan. Why are we yelling, TC? Uh, I'm not yelling. I'm vibing. Um, but we're gonna get into this first game here. We've got we've got LA Tech taking on Tulane. Now Tulane, you see, is seven to one. You're like, whoa, why aren't they ranked? Well, their schedule is complete trash. So we'll see if Husky Boyle can take them down. So Coach Key, if you're there, let me know. Heads or tails, kick or receive. And as always, we do have the fully functional sports book, like I was talking about. So line specific for this game is this game is a three-point spread for the Tulane Green Wave. 
over under is 59.5 and the bear cave prop today for this game is going to be whoopty tibbs will he get multiple rushing touchdowns everybody knows husky boyle the reward player but not a lot of people remember the great whoopty tibbs over on tulane and coach maddox so he's had a little bit of a low-key season we'll see if he can uh, force an upset kind of here going to be a very interesting day very interesting indeed but we are here glad my setup is working glad everything's going well and we are off down into lane they were fighting for that g5 auto bid last year probably out of the race this year la tech as well however still potentially fighting for like a new orleans bull spot maybe a maybe an la bull right so very good bowl seating on the line and as well divisions and stuff so we'll get into it beautiful sunset here at yeoman stadium so he said tails and kick oh i i yeah i'm so discombobulated i forgot his jerseys what did he say did he say the all whites All blue. Well, we're not restarting. I'm rewarding Coach Keat with hopefully a, a bet win for his bet. 7-0, seven, 7-7 seven, seven here to start. I know. Shake my head. I got you the blue pants. We're, we're, we're halfway there. Tulane 14-7. Halftime creeping up. 21-7. Husky Boyle. He's got to get it going. It's 6 and 2. 28-7, dude. What? Husky, get it going. What is happening? My God. All right. Is Tulane a problem? Two years in a row. We got a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Oh my God. Just absolutely obliterated here. It's going to be a Tulane cover, it seems, unless they can do something crazy at the end here. 45, oh my god. And that's going to do it. 45 to, what is that, 16? Wow, all right, two lane covers. Uh, I, let's see Let's see how it happened. Did, uh, did Whipty Tibbs get into the end zone? No, it was t Tracy Potes tossing it around the yard. So, wow, Whipty Tibbs only got one, so the prop bet doesn't hit. That's a tough one. Not even the prop hits. So we got Frank Bright going 20 of 42. No turnovers, 47%. And then Husky Boyle only went for 88 yards, one touchdown. Still a very good day, but uh, definitely not what they're used to. Seven receptions out of the backfield for Boyle as well. You got Clint Cooper, 122. And on defense, Stensby got three tackles. Uh, Veen Camp didn't do too much. He got TFL, only two total TFLs. The defense just didn't do much, hardly at all here today. Got a forced fumble here for Kelvin Nash. And one for one on field goals, but didn't miss an extra point. Welcome in, Coach Flame. How you feeling after a 70-7 uh, to -7 game against Texas Tech? Tracy Potts killed it. Whoopty Tibbs, only one touchdown. He did not get one through the air. That's a tough pill to swallow for betters. I think Whoopty Tibbs was bet on quite a few times. John Arnold, and I haven't looked at any of the bets that were submitted today yet, so we'll, we'll have to. That's pending. Yeah, blame it on the uniforms as they also got a block. All right, LA Tech, they're kind of falling behind. I'm pretty sure they're all in the same division, though. So I think Tulsa or Tulane might be kind of wrapping this division up. Interesting. We saw them be very good last year. Then they choked towards the end of the season. Remember, I got to get my players of the game. You know, I give a four-day schedule, and then I flub up a uniform. Sue me. All right, this is a Tulane cover. Actually, no, please don't sue me. 
<laughs> All right, let's get on into it. We got a ton of crazy games going today. So first one goes to Tulane. Next up is we've got a fun one in the Mountain West. So this week is when the Mountain West starts getting fun. You, you know how the Mountain West goes. It's always just a mountain of bullshit and they're all trash and then finally the good teams face towards the end of the season we got two on tap today uh so uh coach piglet if you're here let me know heads or tails kick or receive you do get priority because um because woolly is the home team and then also you are a patreon member if you have a jersey request let me know he did not submit on the on the thing so we'll give him a second here but this is a push game for Bear Cave this week. The over-under is 61.5. And we are looking at specifically Kelly Kachuk. Will he get a deflection? He was the man that let up the Hail Mary against Missouri. Can he get it back? He wants all black. What do you say? All right, Papa, but heads or tails? Oh, he said heads and kick. Okay. So we're going all black. That means Hawaii has to go with the all whites. And then we'll give him his white helmet. All right, here we go. Heads in kick. All right, we're here in Hawaii. Remember, guys, when we're at Hawaii, the overhangs do block some of the field. That's just a note glitch with this stadium in NCA 14 revamp, so... If we do end up watching, you might see, uh, you might get obstructed view. So here we go, folks. Clarence TC Ching Athletics Complex. Yes, I am the title sponsor for Hawaii Athletics. Me and Coach Woolley worked out a deal. All right, here we go. Heads and kick for Papa. This is where things get hairy in the division. You've got to win these tough games at the end of the season. Four weeks left. All right, first quarter. Hawaii jumps out to a 7-0 lead. Remember, San Diego State coming off that heart-wrenching loss. And we got a safety. So 16-0 here to open the game. Hawaii. Just, it's all going on this side of the field. 19-0. My God, San Diego State not doing anything. Hawaii just giving them the business. It's all on this side of the field. Oh, my God. Complete domination as we enter the fourth quarter. Wooly is pissed off. He hasn't been making podcasts because he's been in the lab brewing this up. 33-0 on your dome. Finally, they score. They break the shutout. We'll see if they can make this a game, but doubtful is that's going to be another blowout here on the day. <laughs> Poor Piglet, man. He loses one here. 33-7. So a couple blowouts here to start the day. That's a Hawaii outright victory. Got to get to a bowl game. That's the goal. It's got Kareem Paul going crazy. Got the safety. I mean, it's just Kareem Paul cooking. So Ed Bradley goes 12-29, 169, one touchdown. Underneath that Concepcion line of 44 and a half. Vic Wally, 13 carries, under three a carry. That does not help you at all. Jeff Edwards played pretty well. We know he's pretty good, but one catch for uh, Uncle Boozer. A couple of sacks given up. Defense played all right. Billy Gilmore doing his thing. A uh, couple of guys doing really well on the line of scrimmage, but they could not hold them for long here. A lot of chances at some interceptions. Couldn't hang on to any of them. As you check out Hawaii, Kareem Paul actually didn't play this entire game. He's in and out of the game, it seems. He also had the most carries. Fleming uh, got a couple, but this is basically Kareem, Kareem Paul hero ball. As Malika Fruz only gets three catches. And on defense, four total sacks. 
No interceptions on the day. Now, did uh, Kelly Kachuk get himself a deflection? No, he did not. See you later, Papa Piglet. Enjoy class. As that will do it here from Hawaii. If I have to show Warrenberg, I have to show every sim result, and I don't want to do that. You can wait until later. You guys will see it first anyways when I uh, when I post the uh, Patreon stat results, so... Wooly saying to rank us even though he can't beat the stinky Missouri Tigers. <laughs> Alright, let's see what's the next up here. Alright, so we move on here in Bear Cave. We now have another undefeated team going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a risky, risky matchup here. As this will be our game day a little bit later on. But first, Arkansas State. And they control their own destiny here in the group of five. The only undefeated team left in the country in the group of five. So we'll see what they can do. UCF, try and take them down. You got Joshua Dubs on this team. No users on either side right now. You got Joshua Dubs, Kaysan Moise. They've got Rock Captain on the defensive end or on the defensive side at middle linebacker. A uh, lot, of, lot of SFA players on both sides here, surprisingly, for two CPU teams. So we'll see if they can get it done. Are we just going to have Iowa State undefeated or will they be able to handle this? It's a four and a half point favorite for Arkansas State at home. The over under is 46.5. And we're looking at specifically Eddie Wilkins rushing yards, the running back for Arkansas State. He was a reject and a freshman All-American last year. And he is racing these guys into the record books this year. Number 12 in the country. We saw them bail themselves out last week on a uh, questionable end to that game with the uh, illegal touching. So we'll see if they get bailed out again by the refs today as we are on board with UCF. So we go heads and kick. Here we go. Can we get a good game here? A close one. UCF starts it out. Joshua Dubs, SFA quarterback on the opposite side. 7-7 seven, seven here. We've got a uh, spammer in the chat. 21-7 here at half. Oh, no. This could be bad. This could be bad. As we enter the third quarter, next quarter, Arkansas State's got to figure this out. They've got to score here. 28-7. All right, fourth quarter. They've got to figure this out. They're getting domed right now by UCF. And that might do it. 35-7. What are these results today, folks? The blue square said, uh, I'm going to give you a bunch of blowouts. Is That's a UCF outright victory. So we're down to one undefeated team left in the country. That is your Iowa State Cyclones. Holy Toledo. The G5 is now wide open open i mean it's pretty good nathan we're just interested in some close games hopefully here today but seems like it joshua dubs said no no i mean look at joshua dubs go off the sfa player 19 of 33 284 three touchdowns through the air and on the ground omar hollis going crazy here seemed like arkin and sfa player case on moise as well so the sfa players finally got to arkansas state it just seems like the Sun Belt very well could wind up being just a complete bloodbath as they're just going to completely eat each other alive, it seems. As you got six TFLs here for Jason Towns. Uh, very nice there. Rock Captain SFA player did get himself an interception. Uh, Fifi Hobson, SFA guy, he got a deflection. No uh, INTs for him. Fumble recoveries, nothing across the board. And now for... Arkansas State, Jacoby Diaz goes 12 of 28, not very good, through an interception, and Eddie Wilkins might have left this game early. He hits the under on his rushing yards. And on defense, 
Pleasant had 11 tackles. Zirkel Bach got one or one TFL. And don't see much here from Max Adrosu, so no sacks, no interceptions. Just a very mediocre game today for this team. Very off game. So that will do it here. So a big upset Bruin, and that completely, like I said, opens up the G5 auto bid to Coastal, to Southern Miss, to Cincinnati again, to uh, all these one-loss teams have a chance now. Because as I said for the, uh, as I said for, um, as I said on the Patreon podcast, like if you're undefeated and you have an out of conference win against Georgia, there's no, there's no way you're gonna, you're not gonna get that bid, right? So, um, so now very well the winner of today's game day means a ton more now. So, UCF outright victory. All right, so we're now going on board here. For the next game. And next game up is going to be Penn State and Maryland. Maryland's a two-point favorite. 56.5 over under. So, Coach Bodie, if you are here, let me know. Heads or tails, kick or receive. Uh, I already see Coach Papa here in the, in, the, uh, in the chat. Let me know, kick or receive, if Bodie is not here. This is a this is really um no longer competing really for the division title it seems. However, they're both still kinda fighting for position to potentially if if Michigan like completely falls off the face of the earth. Alright, I don't see Bodie, so we're gonna go with Maryland and uh and we're looking at for the Bear Cave. Uh, player props. Hugh Dunnett, currently the leader in INTs in the country. He's a former IGR created by Coach Crew. Uh, he's on Penn State, seeing if he gets another interception here today. So here we go. Maryland, they, so many injuries. I'm so sad that they are not up in the top tier of teams. However, they could still, if they win out, find their way into an at-large bid. Remember, 10-2 and two in the Power 5 typically gets you to the playoff. So here we go, folks. I can't give uh, I can't give jersey requests for Bear Cave games if you're not Patreon. You only get jersey requests if uh, if you're on game day. Yeah. So I have to just gloss over those. And I especially can't give out the jersey request if I already fumbled uh, Coach Keats. <laughs> so here we go. See what Penn State chooses. All right, Coach Papa wants to kick it. Here we go, Jerry Schmierman. They're at home. This would be another big win on the year. A quick touchdown for Penn State. Are we going to see yet another blowout today in Week 11? Seen a lot of crazy results here today. Maryland gets back into it. 7-7, Penn State retakes that lead, but Schmierman's battling, and they can't punch it in at the end of the half. Down 7 Two-point favor here for the Maryland Terr Terrapins. They tie it up. Looks like we got a nice one brewing here late. Boogie Toes on the other side. Former Illinois great. They add a field goal. Four minutes remaining. We got to go one play at a time here as this might come down to the wire. They're driving. They're driving. Fourth down. Fourth and inches. Oh, you get 17 yards on third and 17. And they decide to no. No, the field goal's no good for Maryland. 32 yards. Oh, I'm sick. On third and 17, you get to the inches and you kick the field goal and you don't get it. That one hurts. Remember, folks, we'll jump in at the two-minute mark. Here we go. Maryland still has the timeouts. We've got the wideout going for Penn State. Boogie Toes, the Illinois SFA guy in the backfield. Very good running back. First time we've seen Penn State live in quite a quite some time. I think maybe this is the first gameplay we've seen from Penn State since the Terrell Pryor era. Oh, and they try to beat him, but Boogie Toes breaks Shamara Ono's tackle. 
Luckily, they keep him short. So last chance here for Maryland. Gotta get a stop here. Boogie Toes, he is so tough to bring down. You've got to be able to hit him hard. And Boogie, he gets the first and a lot more. That very well could end it. So cross the 50. It's still possible. They have the one timeout here. They are just going to go into victory formation. But Maryland does have the chance here to get, um, I would say, 10 seconds left with no timeouts. We'll see what happens. They're going to go back to victory formation. Interesting call. Is if they run actual plays, they're also running more time off the clock. It's going to be close. Looks like they're going to run a real play here on third down. Yep, so going to try to run a bit more time off the clock here. Third and 15. Hand off to Boogie Toes, and this time, oh no, gets the better part of them. Would have liked that on their last uh, connection. So 14 seconds separates the game and the play clock. So minus the punt time, we'll probably get about nine seconds left, eight or nine seconds. See if they can get a nice return here. Put them in yam range. Home crowd's getting into it, though. All right, here is the punt from Penn State. It's angled to the sideline, trying to mitigate the return. He keeps it. Stays on the sideline in nine seconds from the 30, Derek Roach. So here comes Jerry Schmierman without their top target. That's all right. They still have Bryson Warden. The black arm sleeve, top of your screen. See what they decide to do here. Going to throw it. Floats that. That's going to be a first to Bryson. He's got to get out of bounds. He's fighting. And they're in game range. So we're going to see how far they can throw it here. They're actually going to go for the spike. God, get it off, get it off, get it off! Oh, no! So Bryson doesn't get out of bounds. And Penn State's able to run out the clock. What an upset here for Penn State on the road. Coach Bodie with a signature win. Takes down Maryland, who's been battered and beaten all season long. This one just adds insult to injury. A brutal way to go, folks. These are the moments where I cannot wait for the new game, right? So a three-point loss, another outright victory. So we've had Hawaii outright, UCF outright, and Penn State now outright. Very unique bear cave today. A lot of upsets. So Penn State now looking to get ranked, looking to keep pace in this Big Ten race, at least for the playoff. All right, let's see how this one shook out, folks. Not a lot of scoring today here in Maryland, but big play from Penn State. Got it back. And that missed field goal, man, that hurt so bad. So Jerry Schmerman, 25-35, 312, two touchdowns, one interception. Run the ball 31 times with Brent Jackson. Backener, seven pancakes. Sussy Well had six. Purvis had six. And on defense, you have four TFLs here. No sacks on the day, no INTs. That might be the difference. Uh, deflection here for Buckley. No fumbles. And for Penn State, and Antonio Lewis, 13-22, two touchdowns. Run the ball, him and Toes got the workload. Neither had a great day. Um, this is just a very grinding out victory. Roman Ernest, SFA player, got himself a sack and a couple TFLs. Interceptions, none for Hugh Dunnett. So, interception for Joey Clark. So, another Bear Cave prop not hitting. Iquan Saturn is back, though, SFA player. And that'll do it. So Penn State with an upset.
as we continue on here in this very unique week 11 game uh, bear cave remember if you missed it we are for the remainder of the season going to move to a four-day schedule because we are a bit behind we want the season to end before the new game comes out i do not want to be streaming this game when the new game's out that's <laughs> that's all i that's what i can tell you um All right, so we're going to move on here. Keep it going. Uh, it was Maryland did not win. It was Penn State. Penn State took them down 17 to 14 on a missed field goal from Maryland. So we're going to move on now to the Sickos game of the week. We got UNLV taking on Fresno State. So Coach Cryo, let me know heads or tails, kick or receive. Six-point favorite for the Fresno State Bulldogs. This over-under is going to be 56.5. And we're looking at Chadley Brown. Can he get into the end zone on the ground using his legs for a rushing touchdown? So let's see what happens. And then jerseys wide out for cryo. Okay. So this is now a big game. I mean, it was already big for Fresno, but Hawaii's already won. But now you see Arkansas State lost. So now Fresno State does have some of those good wins. They could get themselves into this G5 auto bid kind of, uh, kind of place here. So here we go. Heads and kick. Welcome in Bucks on top. We've got Bear Cave games. Still got half of the slate left. And then we got a very entertaining game day coming up. We got Coastal Carolina and Southern Miss, both top 25. Grant Davis, the comeback king, will be playing football today on your screen. I'm doing great. Any day we get to sim the SFA, it's a great day. Especially when I'm not an active coach anymore. I can laugh at you guys. I can laugh at West Virginia scoring two points. I can laugh at Buffalo. I don't have to be sad that East Carolina, well, you know, sucks. So... Let's go. We got Fresno State and UNLV here at Bulldog Stadium. So heads and kick here for Coach Cryo. He's not had the best second half to the season. Chadley Brown staring him down. Highest rated quarterback in the country. So first quarter, Fresno State with a quick tutty. Another quick tutty. But UNLV gets one back. Fresno keeping their two-score lead. Fresno State going to add to it. Not a great start for UNLV. And a quick touchdown. The defense just, just completely sucking here. Can UNLV make a comeback? Doesn't seem likely as Fresno State is just doming them here. 42-17 as we enter the fourth quarter. Not looking good for Cryo. But they got a fumble recovery. Can they launch it? And no, they fumbled it right back. And that's going to likely do it here. Fresno State. Looks to have them. And that will be your ball game. That is a Fresno State cover. So let's take a look here. UNLV desperately trying to get to a uh, to a bowl game here, but their defense couldn't stop uh couldn't stop anything. Also giving up, you know, kickoff returns, never good. McLeod did get into the end zone. So Brent. Brett Brooks, 24-44. He, he had a great day. 286, three touchdowns. Obviously, you want that completion percentage to be higher. Uh, but McKenzie, over for a carry as well. I mean, you guys seem to be okay on offense. I think today's problem was definitely the defense. Maybe you could point the finger at Chris Mason, say he should have done more. Uh, Vladislav gave up a sack. Um, but on the defense side, three TFLs. Ubaldo Kingsbury didn't do much. No sacks, no extracurriculars here. They did get an interception from Alford. A couple of deflections, and they had three forced fumbles and only picked up two. So three total turnovers. You had your chances. It just didn't go well. So for Chadley Brown, 18-25, 245, four touchdowns through the air, one interception, and he does not get in on the ground, so that prop does not hit there. 
A lot of different guys catching balls here. This team could very well be scary. They could be a contender if the Sun Belt eats themselves alive. They have that win over Minnesota, like we've said. They had the win over Southern Miss. They themselves got three fumble recoveries. And that will do it. Yeah, definitely not the not the game on the schedule to expect a victory for sure. So a lot of, uh, I mean, we've had a lot of interesting results today, but not a lot of close results. We had one close game so far. That's all right. That normally means the second half of our slate will wind up being pretty good. So that's a Fresno cover. So always get my players of the game. All right. So we're going to move it along now. And next up, we've got our Patreon game of the week here. And Dune wants the all orange. So we've got Arizona State and Boise State. So let's get that up on our screens here. Come on, where am I going? They're in the Pac-12. What, what is this? All right, Arizona State and Boise State. So, Coach Dune, let me know, kick or receive. You are the home team. So, this is going to be a three-point favorite for ASU on the road. 52.5 over under. And for the Bearcade prop, we're looking at the fullback, Lawrence Cade. How many carries will he get today? He, all, he sometimes has a lot of carries. Sometimes he doesn't. He is a transfer from Arizona, rival of ASU. So, will they give him the ball a bunch today? Who knows? So you want the ball, Coach Dune. All right. The Broncos, chance to get to a bowl game here. Not a big chance. They got to start winning. But just getting the bowl eligibility would be a big improvement here for Boise State. So let's see what happens. Got Buckham Broncos. Got Ike Deese in there. the two gloves and we are here on the smurf turf albertson stadium here we go so he wants to receive he's gonna receive here we go folks bull hopes on the line pretty much for both teams boise starts out with a field goal big all right, big big quarter there for Boise. Come on, Boise. And uh, they give up a touchdown. They give up another one. Come on. They get themselves into the end zone, get a stop, and they take the lead at halftime. That was a big man quarter there for Coach Dune. Oh, they take a two-score lead. Come on, Boise. 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 As you enter the fourth quarter, and nothing happens. It's a turnover on downs. Come on, add insult. No. And a quick score. No, not like this. An 86-yard run. Don't let the floodgates open. And an interception thrown by Ike Deason. No, it was too good to be true. It was too good. Here they come. Inside the 20. Wait, there's a flag. Into the goal line. No, they take the lead. Uh, no, I don't submit Bear Cave this season. I, uh, I'm counting it, though. All right, here we go. Jumping into the game. Third and eight. Down four. They had a 10-point lead at the start of the quarter. Shab uh, Sterling Charbono in the slot. Top of your screen, the big man. It's a run from Decent, and he can't get there. And it's an injury! I Decent goes down. The worst spot you can be in. They got to go for it with a backup quarterback. Backup is in. Sterling in the slot. Nobody's covering him. Please just get it to Sterling. The backup over the middle and it's incomplete. No. Not like this. Disgusting is exactly right, Jarkus. So now we got to rely on a defensive stop. So they hand it off to Woods here. Maybe a fumble if we're lucky, but just complete, just lack of wanting to win from this team. They just don't know how to win under Dune. 
fumble a 10 point uh a 10 point lead decent goes down don't even throw it to the sticks brutal they go to the outside that's gonna be a first and a lot more there they go to the end zone and woods get inside the 10 their last hope is being able to stop them for a field goal here we'll see if boise state can do it they're actually going to sit on this, so chance for Boise still. We saw this in the Penn State game. If they play their cards right, they could get the ball back with about 10 seconds left. So they're going to fall on it again. So it looks like Arizona State's going to be comfortable taking the field goal. Remember, clock, there's, there's too much difference here. There's still going to be about 10 seconds left for Boise. Now, will they run a real play? Yes, they will. So you got to get the stop here. Hopefully an incompletion. That would really help you out. But you got to be stupid to throw the ball in this situation if you're Arizona State. So likely just a run up the gut. Got to be able to get a stop here. They're going to flip the play. ASU to go to 5-4. and four. They're going to throw it. Lefty. Over the middle, oh, it's, oh, that was it. You needed the pick, but they get the stop they needed. So now instead of having eight seconds left, if the clock would have kept running, they're going to have 48 seconds. So here's the kick to put it to seven. Kick is up, and that's going to be good for Arizona State. But a big-time blunder for this offense. They could have just ran it down. They would have had five seconds left. Down seven instead, it's 45 seconds. So we'll see if Boise can make them pay here. Hopefully Ike Decent it will be back. Yeah, I think you can definitely give this uh, an honorary Sickos game tag here. That was ridiculous. They barely saved the game there at the one. And, and that's the definition of hustle. Boise State could just given up the win there, given up the touchdown, but they kept hustling. They got the ball back down seven, 42 seconds left, and Decent is back. The quarterback is back in. The SFA one star. Come on. He yams it deep as we get a sub, and it's caught. Bang. Coach win. Thank you, buddy. Terry Bauer down the middle. We're now in business, folks. 35 seconds. The yam, baby. The, the, the sub yam from wind uh, helping his brother complete that pass a beautiful a beautiful sequence right there come on decent please to the end zone it's caught that's in come on dude that was in bro that was in we're at the one. Please, just punch it in. Please, 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 for the love of God. No, they're going to throw it. Decent, please. He goes out of the back of the end zone. What is this game? Bro, there's no way. If they don't score here, I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. That was such a touchdown. Oh, no, they're out empty. The QB draw. Do it. Touchdown! Roman Williams! Bang! From dead in the water with maybe five seconds left, they come back. And the extra point to tie it up. Bang! What a game! I don't know how the Patreon members do it. They always pick the weirdest games that I never think are going to be any good. And then here we are. We got 22 seconds left. Both teams have completely fumbled their shot here. And we got a tie game. It started with Boise screwing up a fourth and five. And then Arizona State completely fumbled the time management. And then here we are, 18 seconds left. Split backs over the middle, and that stopped 
but they call the timeout, so they are intent on getting this touchdown or maybe a field goal. They are in fringe jam range, probably need about 10 yards for it to realistically hit. Manning, he gets hit as he throws, but he does throw it away. So live to find another down. They are sitting on two timeouts, so potentially maybe three plays here if you play your cards right. You got to get a quick first down. You got to um, then get maybe to the to the midfield line here. Trips to the left. Manning gonna throw that short. It's intercepted. Folks, oh my god, five seconds left. <sighs> what are we watching? Five seconds left. Boise can win this in regulation. Are you serious? No field goal. Deason's going to throw as far as he can. He yams it deep to the end zone, and it's intercepted. They're going the other way, and we're going to OT. What an ending to this game. Oh, my God. All right. Coach Dune, let me know. Uh, offense or defense? Offense or defense for Coach Dune? Defense. All right. Here we go. What a game this has been here in the Patreon uh, Bear Cave game of the week. 31-31. Arizona State will start us out here. They've completely folded under pressure here today. Manning has a wide receiver in motion. He fakes it. He's going to throw it. He floats it out of the out of the sideline. Not even close. Manning has been horrific today from what we've watched. Second and 10 now here for Arizona State. 25 yards away. They're creeping up on the defensive end. Stacking the box here. He's going to keep it. And they do get him behind the line to gain. So third and long coming for Arizona State. All momentum has been leaning towards Boise State ever since they got screwed on that on that uh, end of half a field goal. All right, Manning. Drop back third and 11. Here's your chance. Dumps it short. And he's down, fourth down. So we'll see if they get the field goal here. Or do they go for it? They're going to bring out the field goal for unit. This is going to be a, was this, 35-yarder from left hash to take the lead in the first frame. Yeah, you got to kick this. Oh, almost blocked. It is good. Big time kick there. Let me check in. Temple is close to getting to that line. Remember, folks, seven wins Guarantees you a bowl game. Six wins, you're on the bubble. So Boise State, it's all in their basket now. Touchdown wins it. Field goal extends it. And anything else is an L. So here's Deason. Hands it off. Broken tackle. And it looks like Cade is in today for uh, for Sixto. I thought Sixto would be playing. So maybe K does have over, but it looks like our UI broke on the bottom of the screen where it shows us stats and stuff. That's all right. Sterling Charbono there, the tight end. Dumps it. Oh, it's almost picked. That would have ended the game for Arizona State. Yeah, six is eligible. It just depends on, um, on how many spots are available because we run the 12-team playoff. There's a lot less spots, so seven pretty much guarantees you. And then six, it's going to come down to resume like it did last year. We had two teams at six and six make it. Wide open, man. He could score. Touchdown, Boise. They walk it off at home. What a game. Coach Dune gets it done. An absolute classic on the Smurf turf. They just completely lost him there in the flat. Completely lost him is just a drag. Oh, wait, they're, they're replaying something else. But an overtime victory here for Boise.
What a what a game. Cannot wait to watch this one back. All thanks to Wind and his sub. <laughs> his sub immediately during a yam. We've never had that happen before. Beautifully timed. So Coach Doom gets to 4 and 5. He's still alive in the bull race. Mom, get the camera! It's one of those moments. All right, let's take a look. Let's see what craziness even happened here. I mean, Arizona State was kind of dominating. Or no, it was Boise State. They're up 10, that's right. And then Arizona State bounced back with these two big-time uh, runs. 17 straight points there, and then they tied it up at the end because ASU was boneheaded. Oh, man, I cannot believe they threw it on that third down. Just complete lapse of judgment. Boise takes advantage. And Ike Deason, man, 16 for 33, 228, four touchdowns, two interceptions. Look at him go, baby. And six toe, he actually got hurt, which made the over hit for Cade. He came in as the backup, very nicely done. And Sterling Charbono, no touchdowns. All went to Terry Bauer, including that game winner. And on defense, Nick Sis. And then they had some very timely uh, sacks, interceptions here from Casey Lee there at the end. A couple of deflections across the board. Very, very good defense we've seen for Boise State today. Very impressed with this team. And, and uh, talk about a guy who can't handle the moment. A.J. Manning just completely shit himself here. 229, one touchdown, one interception. Completely folded. As Eric Wood is sick, he just popped off. He was averaging 10 a carry, and we didn't even really see him run the ball too much. Uh, just ridiculous. I don't even think he, he only got one carry in that overtime. A lot of pancakes, 10 tackles for McNeil. No sacks. They did get in there, uh, two interceptions. One deflection and one fumble for Mark Davis, and it was picked up by Mark Davis. So that's going to do it, though. Arizona State takes the L. Boise State gets that critical victory, and that's going to be a Boise State outright win. So another uh, favorite goes down. So let's get our players of the game. We've got Terry Bauer and Vernon Bennett. Very exciting win there for Coach Dune. As we've got Boise outright. Very impressive. Very fun game. Very happy with how that one turned out. All right, so as we move along, as we truck along here, now the games start getting a little bit better. Oh, man, this one could be a doozy. I know Coach Mike put a hefty amount on Nebraska on this game, so does he know someone thumb something we don't? But we've got Coach Fed. Taking on Coach Zach. Zach, who's dominated the conversation this season. Top five team in the preseason. Just complete debacle has been happening in uh, in Lincoln. He always likes to wear these. So, Coach Fed, if you're here, let me know. Heads or tails, kick or receive. Coach Zach as well, kick or receive if you're here. This is a seven-point favorite for the road team. They have the best duo in the country. You've got... The current Heisman leaders, Dequavius Gates at quarterback, and the wide receiver, Tyreek Asher. We've not seen somebody like him since Chet Doge. He has been dominating. He's currently in the Heisman race. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, Coach Zach told me anytime he's on stream, automatic black shirts away or home. Um, but this over-under is going to be 60.5, while OK State is a 7-point favorite. And we're looking at... Uh, Tyreek Asher just a receiving TD. That's a minus 200 line. That's ridiculous. I think he has 20 plus this season already. So we'll see if they can do it. I don't see either team here. So we're going to go on board with the away team. See if Oklahoma State can keep the dream season alive. Obviously, um, Iowa State running away with the North Division, it seems. And Oklahoma State in a battle with Baylor. But Baylor's not slowing down. They just broke the game day record on watch party. Definitely go watch that if you haven't. But this is going to be a battle of epic proportions. We got the winter windbreakers out. It is cold here in Lincoln. 
but Stequavius Gates and Tyree Gasher are red hot. Here we go. As you can see, Iowa State can wrap up the division next week with a win or an Arkansas loss. And on the other side, Baylor does continue to be the favorite here. Um, as they do have the head-to-head -head over Oklahoma State and TCU loss. So that will update here next week. So here we go. Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. We've been here quite a few times. We're going to go heads and kick for the away team. So Nebraska will get it first. Nebraska, very interesting team. When you watch them, they seem to be good. When we, uh, but then when when they sim, they're horrific. And no score on the opening start for either team. OK State starts us out with a tutty. Nebraska responds. Oh boy, this game could be really good. Oklahoma State gets a tutty. Oklahoma State, can they keep it going? Yes, they do. They extend it to two scores. Nebraska, three scores before half. It's Jay Henry. So we head to the second half. Nebraska is getting cooked. 31-7. Nebraska desperate. They're down 17 as we enter the fourth quarter. Nebraska making a comeback. It's 31-21. We're going to go one play at a time here. But here it comes, Oklahoma State. A big-time drive. Throwing it, throwing it, and they get stuffed. So they add a field goal. It's still two scores. So if we get a quick score from Nebraska, this could be a good finish. And it's fourth and ten. We can't jump in until it's a one-score game. Remember that. They're in the goal line. That's a touchdown. Arian Green Davis gets it in. They're down six, folks. Here we go. Oklahoma State. They can win the game with a first down. It's Quavius Gates. Going to hand it off to Huey Creed, the old Dominion transfer, and that's not going to do it. So Nebraska is going to get their chance. Ping Mayorga. Oh, my. Nebraska could save the season if they can somehow find bull eligibility. So the punt unit is out. Can they pin them deep? Oh, there's a chance. No, they can't get there. So Nebraska has their chance now. 34-28, down six, currently in no cover. Oklahoma State's been dominating this game. They're up 31-7 at one point. Julius Swain at quarterback. We've seen him time and time again. Can they get this done? He takes off. He's sacked! John Willis gets to him. They're going to have to hurry it up now. They've got to get to the end zone. They got one of the best wide receivers in the country, Arian Green Davis, but he throws that deep. He's hit and caught! Oh, my! Bobby Williams skies it. Gives him a fresh set of downs. What a grab. Keeps this drive going. Gets out of bounds as well. So Julius Wayne now has some swagger, but then he throws that off balance to Arian Green Davis. Clock is running. They use a timeout now. So minute five seconds left. Already in fringe jam range. Got to get a touchdown. Plenty of time here. They're going to blitz. They're getting aggressive. Swain escapes. Swain has speed. Oh, there goes Swain. Inside the 35. Oklahoma State choking before her very eyes. Who's going to make the play? Swain. Corner blitz. Doesn't hit home. He takes off. Oh, he evades two men. And gets four. Swain is running with his head cut off. He wants this win more than anybody. They hurry it up. Swain drops back. They're playing contain. He floats it to the corner. And Arian, he gets the foot in. Green Davis over 200 yards on the day. You'd think his name was Asher. First and goal. To upset OK State. 
Swain takes off. He has room! Swain! And he's stuffed! The clock is ticking. They've got to hurry it up. The season hanging in the balance for the Cornhuskers. 20 seconds left. Swain. Swain. Plenty of time. He takes off. Swain! Touchdown! Nebraska! They take the lead! What a chop block seals the edge and gives Nebraska the lane. Julius Swain doing it all himself. So 18 seconds left for Stequavius Gates and Tyreek Asher. They're in disbelief. They were up 31-7. This team practically a shoe-in for the CFP. You just got to get the job done. So can we see some magic? It's Dequavius Skates and then Tyreek Asher. Top your screen, number 80 on Chase Boggs. One of the best corners in the country. SFA player as well. Throws that over the middle. He's going to hit his man, and that's a first. They still have all those timeouts. They can easily get into field goal range here if they play their cards right. One yam, and you're in field goal range. Tyreek Asher, the best wide receiver in the country, bottom of your screen. Gates, man in a motion. It's going to be a screen pass. He does it. Wait, he breaks it. Oh, no. Gates gets sacked. Now that gives you basically two chances at the end zone. You got to go to Asher here. Nine seconds left. Gates throws it short. I guess just trying to get into fringe yam range. It's going to be 65 yards away. We know Stequavius Gates has the arm. To upset number six. And see how far they can throw it. Gates drops back. He has time. He yams that deep. It's a massive floaty. And it is tipped away. And it's final. Coach Zach finally gets what he's wanted. Finally, Nebraska shows up. And OK State loses. Two insane games in a row. Blowing a 31-7 lead by number six in the country. Doing their own Nebraska impression was the Cowboys. It wasn't quite 27-point comeback, but it was 24. So now Baylor sits firmly in first place as Baylor and Iowa State, number one and two in the nation, are likely now going to meet in the Big 12 Championship. 35-34, an unbelievable game here from Nebraska. And Julius Swain, man, finally showing up when it mattered the most. And how about, uh, and then how about also, um, Arian Green Davis, dude, over 200 yards. He cooked. What a game. And Coach Mike put a big-ass bet on Nebraska covering the spread. They did more than cover it, and Tyreek Asher does get his touchdown. So probably the easiest bet of your life if you decide to make it. So Stequavius Gates, four touchdowns, 424 for the Heisman favorite. Very good day regardless of what the defense did. Tyreek Asher, 141 in one touchdown. And this is actually one of his worst games of the season. <laughs> That's just ridiculous to think about. Um, Blocking-wise, they did pretty good. Defense, I guess, just completely choked under pressure. Couldn't get the big play when it mattered the most. They did get the they got the sack, but then they couldn't get the couldn't get the stop on the on the pass and just snowballed from there, unfortunately. So Julius Swain, 20-36. This is arguably the best game of his career. 
three touchdowns. He ran it on the ground. He had five total. And Green Davis as well. This is for sure the best game of his career. 200 yards, two touchdowns. Johnston was crazy. Bobby Williams, that crazy catch on the game-winning drive. Unbelievable. Welcome in, Coach Maddox. Congrats on your win today. Yes, sir. You destroyed L.A. Tech. Mayorga getting three TFLs here. Sack for long. No interceptions, though, today. That's all right. Got some deflections. Got a fumble as well from Duthie. So just a big-time win here for Nebraska, hopefully propelling them to bowl eligibility. They've got to win two of their remaining three games, most likely. See if they can do it. But this one surely will help. If you, if you remember that Coastal Carolina result, that just ruined this team for the better part of the year. We'll see if this one propels them to go on a streak to get to a bowl game. So that is a Nebraska cover. Or another outright victory today. We've got so many outright victories. If you are just uh if uh if you're just joining us, we had Tulane cover, Hawaii outright, UCF outright, Penn State outright, Fresno State cover. Boise State outright and Nebraska outright. So some very, very interesting results going on here today on Barricade. We got some uh, got some upsets. So as we move on here is we're now to the nitty gritty. We've got the world's largest outdoor cocktail party down in the SEC. We've got Georgia. And we've got Florida, who, if you remember last week, Florida completely choked to Auburn with a defensive miscue. Let's see if they figured it out this week. This is a CPU versus CPU game, so there's nobody to uh, to wait for. So let's just jump into this. It's a uh, two-point favorite for the Bulldogs and 42.5 over under. And we're looking at, uh, for Florida, we're looking at Toto Sucky, the the best kicker in the country. Will his longest field goal today be over or under 44 and a half yards? So our first time I've ever had a kicker prop uh, here on a length of kick. So we'll see what happens. And with Tennessee losing, this division now is back up in the air. It's all, it all burn controls their own destiny. And then if they lose, then all of a sudden, maybe a Georgia, maybe a Florida finds their way back. But Auburn now controls their destiny in this division. So we'll see. We saw what happened last week at the Swamp. We'll see if it happens again. So as always, we're going to go heads and kick. Georgia, one of those years where they're winning all sorts of amazing games and then losing some ridiculous games. Who's JT? 7-7 seven, seven here at the end. Oh, JT, the old UNLV coach. 17-14. Florida keeping a lead here at home. Are we going to see another outright victory here? Florida looking good. Can Georgia battle back? No, Florida's stepping on the gas here, folks. But wait, there's a fumble. And 54 yards, no good. That would have hit the over. And uh, Florida continues to add it. So we'll see. Can Georgia get a touchdown here? They need some big plays. They got one to McNeil, the SFA player. And not a two-score game yet. We can't jump in, unfortunately. And bang! They got the two-point conversion. It's now down to eight. So we get to watch the extra or the onside kick. Here we go. Can Georgia get another crazy win? Oh, that onside kick went out of bounds. What in the world? Free kick out of bounds. Oh, welcome in, Coach Mears. Been a while. Uh, we're good, dude. We're trucking along in Season 15. We're going to close it out right before the new game drops. Move over to the new game. So, good, good as ever. We got 33-25. Handoff here. First down will end it. Broken tackle to the outside. They stack them up. If you ever want to rejoin Mears, you can just you can pop in, claim a team. Texas State is taken now, though, by Coach Fye. He's trying to rebuild them, having a tough season this year. 
but he's doing some good things over there. Second and five now, handoff, and Burt Osborne can't hold him. Third and one now. Game on the line here. Johnson going to hand this off. It's a counter, and to get through, that's going to be a first and more. Runs through a man. Brandon Wilson gives him the victory here. No timeout. It's not like the other ones. They're not going to have enough time. So victory formation. Georgia is going to lose this game. They're going to lose and go to four losses just like Tennessee. So Florida's keeping their playoff hopes alive here. I always told JT uh, Dogwater that he can, um, if you wanna, if you wanna post like a storyline, because you remember how he left, he got fired and then he disappeared, right? So if you make a story, he can come back as an assistant for you. But if he ever wants to return to the SFA, he can't coach you UTSA. He has to pick a different team because he got fired. Yeah, no, he's not McMetz. Mears was here um, about a about a year ago, or yeah, about an IRL year ago. He uh, was with Texas State, and uh, so the long for Toto Sucky is forty one. So his under is gonna hit, and then he had to leave for some personal reasons for a while. But it looks like he's starting to get back to where he might be able to, to enjoy some stuff again. All right, so Florida gets it done. So it looks like the big kahunas in the division now are Auburn, then Florida. And on the other side, Texas and Texas A&M. A ridiculous year here in the SEC. Love to see some new faces stepping up. As we've not seen a good Florida in quite a few years. We have not seen a good Auburn pretty much ever. And Texas and A&M obviously are better than Oklahoma. So that is actually going to be another outright victory. Florida gets it done. So pretty much all we have Tulane cover and we have a Fresno State cover. Everything else has been outright for the underdog or the push. Unbelievable bear cave so far. I don't think we're going to get a lot of high scores this week. Except you never know. Some of you guys are crazy and submit some wacko bear caves that pop off. So a couple of games left here on Bear Cave. And as always, we have a game day coming up a little later. Uh, Coastal Carolina taking on Southern Miss. And with Arkansas State losing, the G5 auto bid is now completely wide open. And whoever wins that game will likely be the person who's going to win it. So... The under hits for Toto Sucky's longest uh, kick. We'll check the stats here. Jorge Mooney, 19 to 34, two or three touchdowns, 260 through the air. David Wright, 166 on the ground. And Trip McNeil, the true freshman, uh, submitted by Coach Wind. Uh, he committed to Georgia, and now he's going crazy here for them. Nicely done. Khalil Reeves, SFA guy. Georgia normally stacked with SFA talent just because. They get tons of those in-game recruits. Sack for Reeves. Uh, interceptions, none. Deflections, a few. And that's going to do it. And then for Florida, you got Jared Johnson, the junior, 15-27. No touchdowns through the air. They did it all on the ground. Brandon Wilson, almost 200 yards, averaging over five a carry. Got three touchdowns. If you want to see big offense, you guys should watch the watch party game that's going to be posted after game day on YouTube. It's uh, Baylor and Texas Tech. Baylor actually breaks the scoring record for a game day sim. So if you want to see some crazy offense, some crazy defense, go check that game out. Duke Archbishop the third gets five tackles. And Toto Sucky goes for 41. So that will do it here from Florida as we got a few more games left. Pretty sure you submitted him win. Pretty sure, pretty sure, pretty sure. If my memory proves to be correct, which sometimes it's not. 
but he definitely is an SFA guy that was submitted. So that's a Florida outright win. All right, two games left on the docket, and they are some biggies. So first up is going to be Ohio State and Minnesota. So Coach Rick, if you're here, let me know heads or tails, kick or receive. I think you're at home, so I think it's just going to be heads or tail or just kick or receive. Uh, is This is going to be a critical cross-division matchup. So right now, Minnesota leads, but I was starting to heat up here. I mean, look at this 56-14. They've got to keep pace in the division. They have more divisional games to play. And Ohio State trying to battle with Michigan here. So both teams desperate. So we'll see Minnesota. What can they do? This game, it's a two-and-a-half point favorite for the Buckeyes. Now, remember, the Buckeyes have a backup quarterback after their uh, starter tore his Achilles early in the year. So that's why they dropped out of the rankings. And then they've been recently, though, on a tear as they uh, actually shut out Iowa just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so they've been going crazy. We'll see if Ohio State can continue on the road. But Minnesota's been just as good. This over-under is 53.5. And we're looking at... Um, Jackson Arroyo. Oh, man. Did I... Uh, hold on. No, I didn't. I, I messed up the graphic for the Bear Cave props. That's why. So, uh, Jackson Arroyo. He, this is the big line on the week. Will he get a rush touchdown, a pass touchdown, and a win today? That's a plus 650 line. We'll see if anybody was able to get it. So, Huntington Bank Stadium here. So I don't see anything from Coach Rick. As always, we go kick. So let's see what happens, folks. First quarter for Minnesota, and Ohio State starts the scoring. But it's only a field goal. Touchdown. Minnesota leads after one. Minnesota, this is a very low-scoring game yet again. Kind of a Big Ten classic. 14-3. Minnesota can't add points before the half. 21-3 now for Minnesota. Ohio State battling back. 28. It's looking good for the Gophers. 28-17, though. They're battling. Minnesota, critical victory right there. Can they finish them off? Man, they're not going away. We're going one play at a time. Can they finish it off? It is 11 points, so we can't jump in. Fourth down. Ohio State, they've got to find a way to get a, to get a score here quickly. See if they can do it. Fourth and ten, and that's going to end it. Wait, that was a defense. Negative two-yard rush, so that's going to do it. Minnesota, bam, big-time win there for the Gophers. 35-24, Jackson Arroyo gets it done. He got the pass touchdown. Did he get a rushing? He did get a rushing and a win. So if you bet on the plus 650 line, it hit. 35-24. What a win here for the Gophers. So now, man, that, that, that match between Iowa and Minnesota coming up in a couple of weeks is looking juicy as Jackson Arroyo, the Nebraska transfer, has himself a day. Quay Camaro, the Southern Miss transfer, five TFLs, got a sack here. A lot of sacks on the day. They got four. No interceptions, though. Couple of deflections, sure. Fumble from McNamara. And for Ohio State, you got Brandon Francis, who's that backup quarterback, having himself a fantastic day. Ohio State's still looking pretty good. Terrell Flowens, the SFA player, having a crazy day. Two sacks. And it's and this is these are critical matches because like when you have three losses, man, if you're nine and three, you've got to battle with a ton of people for an at large spot. You like how it's been the last two years, like nine and three can get into the playoff, but you're battling with like six or seven other nine and three teams. So that ten and two is really where you can start to relax a little bit. So this was pretty much an elimination game of sorts. So Minnesota, man, keeps it going.
Oh, okay, Wind. I see you. I see you. <laughs> Some network error. Luckily, I have timestamps, so I can't. I don't have to worry about. Don't have to worry about the frisky people. And so once again, another outright victory. Minnesota was not the favorite, and they still win. These underdogs are going absolutely crazy, folks. So what does that mean for this last game? <laughs> last game of Bear Cave. And we're going right back to the Big Ten. This is a massive game. Surprise us didn't get game day. But we just saw East Carolina and Michigan last couple of weeks. Number five versus number 11. This is a this is nothing to do with conferences. However, this is everything to do with critical at-large victories, resume builders. The winner of this game is likely in the playoff based on their resume. So we'll see what happens here. Mango, let me know heads or tails, kick or receive. And before we get started on the last game of the week, let me get uh, our prediction going here. Uh, remember, we have game day coming up, but this is the last Bear Cave game. So who wins this one? Do you have Mid Michigan getting the win, Coach Mango, or do you have East Carolina? So we'll give you guys a minute here with your predictions. Get those going. All right. So this is a four-point... Uh, favorite for ECU over under is 42.5 and we're looking at Blake Womack the SFA player on East Carolina the defensive end TFLs will get over 1.5 uh, so you want tails and to defer so you want to just pick the side you don't want to you don't want to pick kick or or receive you want to defer or do you want to kick like when you say defer do you want to take the ball second half or do you want to okay so i know in real life you can say defer and they're like okay you'll, you'll kick yeah yeah okay and before we get started remember if you miss the top of the show um looking at just how scheduling's looking for the next month before the new game comes out we are behind just a little bit uh so for the remainder of the season i'm gonna go on a four-day schedule not a five-day schedule so next game day will be on saturday not Sunday. So um, things will be speeding up a little bit. Uh, and, and also I'm going to streamline a couple of things. So like um, game day poll will come out way quicker. Might not have the rankings in there because I want to get that choice so I can get Bear Cave out quicker. Uh, for bets, I'm only going to do prop bets and I'm only going to do game lines as like same game parlays. I've only had maybe one or two even submitted all season long. So I'm going to vault those for the remainder of the season. Just takes me too long. Nobody's really betting them. So no reason for me to waste that time um and then also patreon recruiting those updates will stop for the rest of the season as they don't matter anyways and if for some gun godly reason we have to stay on this game i'll do a full um showcase of your in-game recruiting class anyways so you'll miss nothing there so just a reminder we're going to four day schedules for the remainder of the season not five so let's get into it We've got Michigan. We've got East Carolina, my former team, both coming off of really strong game day performances. Michigan throttled uh, Minnesota, and East Carolina throttled North Carolina last week. So we'll see what these two can do. Some of the bigger uh, bigger contenders is obviously ECU is our defending national champions. So we'll see if Mango can get another massive victory. They are currently the second highest rated one-loss team. Only behind Baylor, our number one team in the country. And we're right back at Dowdy Thicken. We were here last week. So we want tails and kick here for Michigan. The Michigan men on the road. They will kick it. They will get their defer to the second half. Here we go, folks. Quick touchdown for ECU. Michigan gets it back, but they miss the extra point. Down eight after one. East Carolina extends it to two scores. Another, there's a quick touchdown for Michigan. They did not go for two. So still down four as we hit halftime. Looking like a very good game here. Michigan gets a quick touchdown. Ties it up for ECU. Michigan takes the lead. Michigan having a fantastic start to the second half. 
Michigan looking great. They're trying. They do. It's now a two-score uh, game here. Now we're going to watch one play at a time if ECU can get this back. And, oh, no, an interception by Jennings in the red zone. Throws his game away. Potentially that was their chance. They're going to have to get a big play here now. We know this team can score a ton, but in the yeah, they're moving the ball a little bit, but fourth and two, they got to get this. We can't jump in until it's a one-score game, and they turn the ball over. Michigan's going to win this game, folks. Michigan takes down number 11 East Carolina, 34-20. So a two-score win on the road for Michigan. They go to 9-1. and one. Quickly becoming a true player today. Unbelievable performance here for the Michigan men. So James Love goes crazy. 18 to 32, two touchdowns, one interception. And Tom Smith, the backup running back, looks like Greg Rogers got hurt. And so the backup comes in, Tom Smith, and just cooks. Three touchdowns, averaging five a carry. Very interesting indeed. Runner Hornbeak transfer from TCU gets it done. A couple of TFLs, a couple of sacks, a couple of interceptions that really helped him out as well. Deflections. Cassius Dreyer got a fumble. Hornbeak got a fumble. So SFA players coming up big. And then for East Carolina, Mike Jennings threw two interceptions. Very, very costly there. And then running the ball, Tony Brooks still had a great day, but you gotta you can't turn the ball over. Vlad Sexton led the way in the receiving game. But they just couldn't score enough. Marvin Bain, Ryan Lloyd, Theodore Chond, and did Womack no TFL. So he goes on the under on his prop. Interception from Bradley Edwards. Deflections, couple, no fumbles either. So no turnovers for ECU. They just let the game get away from them in the second half. So, oh boy, Flame. So do you remember, Flame, do you remember uh, Season 7 where... Uh, that game between Michigan and uh, and Baylor in the Orange, in the Orange Bowl or whatever it was, where you or no, it was to go to the Orange Bowl and you threw that interception with Teddy Bridgewater. You already beat him this year. Can you beat him again, or will you face him in the playoff again? Because you neither of you guys, well, uh, you've made the playoff, but Michigan has not made the playoff since then. That was their last hurrah, where where they choked and they fumbled against Iowa State. So it's crazy that um, it's crazy to think about how connected Iowa State, Baylor, and Michigan are. And yeah, it's like here we go again. It's like all the time. It's like you and Iowa State, you just are always on a collision course. And now Michigan is somehow always in there as well for no reason. So um, that is a Michigan outright victory. So if you are recapping your Bear Cave, everything was an outright victory except Tulane covered and Fresno State covered. Everything else was an upset. And then Hawaii won the push game. So as always, guys, we are going to preview next week. And like I was just saying, uh, game day poll will actually probably come out tonight. So it won't have the correct rankings on it. But um, I want to make sure there's only one game left for this week. And there is. So week 12 remember everybody now there's no limits on game days you can we can watch whoever and whatever we want you got oklahoma tennessee tennessee not having a good season oklahoma having a down year you got georgia tech north carolina that's a big one iowa state nebraska that could be interesting very interesting games across the board here indeed utsa seven and two congratulations to Dogwater there utah usc could be a banger uh, Oklahoma State in the Turnpike Classic. A lot of interesting selections here. Minnesota, Iowa State, that could be for the division next week. All right, Mears, take it easy. Buffalo, Clemson. Buffalo now is risking the division if they lose again. A lot of interesting games here. A lot of football left to be played here in the SFA Season 15. Number one, Baylor taking on BYU. BYU quietly 7-2. Some very interesting games. You got Southern Miss and Troy. We'll see what Southern Miss can do a little later on. But things are definitely heating up here as we head towards the finish line. 
my god dude there's so many good matchups texas and auburn this could be an sec championship clash all right so that's gonna do it for us here on bear cave thank you guys so much for watching i'll be back in about five to ten minutes for game day so stick around and uh we'll see you for coastal carolina and southern miss peace